Hello friends and foes, Griffin here from the Command Valley coming at you with another Monday Deck Tech. Today we're going to be going over one of the new Jumpstart Commanders which is going to be released on July 17th here in the US. Before we begin, two quick reminders. The first, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. It helps us out a lot and we appreciate all of you who have subscribed to our channel and continue to support us. And second of all, just a reminder that this episode and this podcast is brought to you by Game Grid Lehigh. If you are in the Utah County area, please feel free to check them out. They have an amazing selection of cards, really friendly staff, and all the board games and board game accessories that you could want. So without further ado, let's jump into it. The commander that I have decided to build today is obviously the one that is Azorius. It's Inyaz the Gale Force. Inyaz is 3 blue blue for a 4-4 legendary creature Jin with flying. For 2 and a blue-white hybrid, attacking creatures with flying get plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. And then whenever 3 or more creatures you control with flying attack, each player gains control of a non-land permanent of your choice controlled by the player to their right. So there is so many things I love about this deck, but before I go into it, I just wanted to give you guys a warning. This is a control deck. The way I have built this is to be a little bit more controlling, so for the faint of hearted that do not enjoy the control-esque style, then turn away because this is going to get spicy. Alright, so let's review Inyaz. So obviously the first thing that we want in this deck is a lot of creatures with flying. So with this deck, the way I have built it, there are three objectives and, and three steps, I should, I suppose, for this deck. The first is obviously control. We're going to be our, using our Azorius pieces to control the board, stop people from attacking us. And obviously with Inyaz's ability to switch around things, uh, which is very controlling. Which brings me to the second objective, which is rearrange. With Inyaz's ability to be able to switch things around, we're going to be able to take control of things and give things to other players, which means there's going to be a lot of table talk, a lot of politics, and probably make somebody upset when you steal their Ulamog. And the third thing is we are going to flood the table. Because obviously moving and rearranging permanents isn't going to help us exactly to win. But since we are already attacking with flying creatures, then we're going to try to flood the board with flying creatures and use that to win if we don't already have our win cons through our enchantments and our artifacts and such. So let's start off with flood. The... The first thing that we want in this deck is to be able to get out f creatures with flying. And the best way to do that is to create tokens and small creatures that have flying. So let's go ahead and go through it. The first that I have is Artificer's Assistant, one blue for a flyer. Whenever you cast a historic spell, scry one. Healer's Hawk, a one, one for one with flying and lifelink. Sarah's Ascendant, one white for a one, one that gets plus five, plus five if you start with 30 or more life, which a commander you do. Warkite Marauder is one and a blue for a flyer, and whenever it attacks, target creature defending player controls loses all abilities and has base power and toughness 0 1 until end of turn. This can be really nice if they have a flyer that we're trying to get rid of, just make it into a little dud. Empyrean Angel is one white blue for a 2 3 flyer. Other creatures you control with flying get plus 1 plus 1. Hanged Executioner is two and a white for a 1 1 flyer that when it enters the battlefield, create a 1 1 white creature spirit token with flying. And for three and a white, we can exile Hanged Executioner to exile target creature. Twilight Drover is 2 and a white for a 1-1 one, one creature spirit. Doesn't have flying, but whenever a creature or token leaves the battlefield, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Twilight Drover. And then for 2 and a white, remove a plus 1 plus 1 counter from Twilight Drover and create 2 1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying. Wardon of Evos Isle is 2 and a blue for a 2-2 two, two with flying. Creature spells with flying you cast cost 1 less to cast. Archon of Sun's Grace is 2 white white for a 3-4 creature Archon from Theris Beyond Death with flying and lifelink. Pegasus creatures you control have lifelink, or maybe Pegasi. Pegasi creatures you control have lifelink, and it has Constellation. Whenever enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, create a 2-2 white Pegasus creature token with flying. And we have a lot of enchantments in this deck since we are playing control, so we're going to be able to get a lot of value off of the Archon of Sun's Grace. Emiria Angel is 2 white white for a 3-3 creature angel with flying with landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may create a 1-1 white bird creature token with flying. Glendalender Archmage is 3 and a blue for a 2 2 flying fairy wizard with 1 blue sacrifice Glendalender Archmage counter target non creature spell. And it also has persist. So, just a counter spell on a flyer is exactly what we're looking for. Azor the Lawbringer is 2 white white blue blue for a 6 6 legendary creature sphinx with flying. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent can cast instant or sorcerer spells during that player's next turn. And when it attacks, you may pay X white blue blue. If you do, you gain X life and draw X cards. Last of our creatures, we have Harmonious Archon, which is 4 white white for a 4 5 creature Archon with flying. Non Archon creatures have base power and toughness 3 3, and when it enters the battlefield, create 2 1 1 white creature human tokens. 
So we can just make sure that all of our flying creatures, our 1-1 one, one flying creatures, become 3-3s three and levels the board. And then lastly, lastly, we have Medomai the Ageless, which is 4 white-blue for a 4-4 four, four legendary creature Sphinx with flying. Whenever Medomai deals combat damage to a player, take an extra turn after this one, and Medomai the Ageless can't attack during extra turns. And then lastly, 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 we have Safara Sky's Blade, which is 4 white, white, white for a 7-7 seven, seven legendary creature Angel. You may pay white and tap 4 untapped creatures you control with flying rather than pay the spell's mana cost. She has flying and lifelink, and other creatures you control with flying have indestructible. It's going to be very easy to cheat her out for just one white with the amount of flyers that we're creating in this deck. Moving on to our spells that create flyers. We have Stolen by the Fae, which is blue, blue, X for a sorcery. Return target creature with converted mana cost X to its owner's hand. You create X, 1-1 one, one blue fairy tokens with flying. Entreat the Angels is X, X, white, white, white for a sorcery to create X, 4-4 four, four white angel creature tokens with flying. But as a miracle for X, white, white. Midnight Haunting is 2 and a white for an instant. Create 2 1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying. Migratory Root is 3 white blue for a sorcery that says create 4 1-1 one, one white bird creature tokens with flying and also has basic land cycling for 2 generic. Spectral Possession can be cast for either white 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 or 2 generic per white. For a sorcery create 3 1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying. Triplicate Spirits is 4 white white for a sorcery with Convoke put 3 1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield. And then at our tier end, some of our best token makers that can also count as our win cons, we have Devout Invocation, which is 6 and a white for a sorcery. Tap any number of untapped creatures you control, put a 4-4 four, four white angel creature token with flying onto the battlefield for each creature tapped this way. Then lastly, we have Storm Herd, which is 8 white white for a sorcery, put X-1-1 one, one white Pegasus, Pegasi creature tokens with flying into play where X is your life total. Moving on to our enchantments, we've got Luminarch Ascension, which is one and a white for an enchantment. At the beginning of each opponent's end step, if you didn't lose life this turn, you may put a quest counter on Luminarch Ascension. And for one and a white, you can create a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying. Activate this ability only if Luminarch Ascension has four or more quest counters on it. Then finally, we have Divine Visitation, which is three white white for an enchantment. If one or more creature tokens would be created under your control, that many 4-4 four, four white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance are created instead. It doesn't necessarily create us flying creatures, but it does turn our 1-1 one, one flying spirits or pegasus into 4-4 four, four angels. All right, so say we're playing a game and we've ramped and we've casted some flying creatures and we're ready to cast Inyaz with three or four flying creatures. Now what are we going to do? So let's move on to the second one, which is Rearrange. Because Inyaz doesn't have to be attacking... In order for that trigger to go off, that means even if we have three flying creatures, that means if we have three flying creatures, when we cast Inyaz, we can get that ability right away when going to combat. The second thing is that effect happens before damage is taken, so you can rearrange some flyers if you're trying to hit somebody. And the third thing is, and this is my favorite, this is the absolute favorite thing about this effect, is that it does not target any permanent, which means you can take things with Shroud or Hexproof. If they're Commander, specifically, Obviously, one of the first things that you might think of when you see this effect is to just rearrange everybody's commanders. That is a harsh thing to do and is, is very, very mean, but you can do it. And even if they have Hexproof from a Lightning Greaves or a Swift of Boots, you can still move them around. But let's look at some other things that we want to rotate around. Since we get to choose a non-land permanence and we can move him to the player only to our right, the person to our right is not going to feel great with the stuff that we're giving them. And the person to our left is not going to feel great great about the things that we're taking from them. So the person who's not either on your left or right is safe for now. So what shenanigans are we going to pull off with this? So in blue and white, we have some interesting enchantments and also artifacts that we can put onto our table and move them to the next player and cause damage or control them in a way that hurts. So first up, we've got Grid Monitor, which is four generic for a four six artifact creature. You can't play creature spells. So we cast the grid monitor, we attack with all of our creatures, we move the grid monitor to the right, the player on our right can no longer cast creature spells until it is gone. Lich's Tomb is 4 generic for an artifact that says you don't lose the game for having 0 or less life. However, whenever you lose life, sacrifice a permanent for each one life you lost. So this is very brutal. If our opponent onto our right does not have flyers and we are swinging at them, we've casted the Lich's Tomb, we move it to the player to our right, we hit them with our flyers, and they have to sacrifice that many permanents. That's rough. I love it. A new card from M21, Nine Lives, which is one white white for an enchantment with Hexproof. If a source would deal damage to you, prevent that damage and put an Incarnation Counter on Nine Lives. When there are nine or more Incarnation Counters on Nine Lives, exile it, and when Nine Lives leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. Now, when I first saw this, I thought this is an awful enchantment, because it really is, but in this deck, this shines. We cast it for one white white. Let's say we have nine flying creatures, and we send them all at somebody. 
and we send them all to the player to our right. We move the nine lives over to them. They take nine damage. Nine lives gets nine incarnation counters, gets exiled, and they lose the game immediately. Now we don't necessarily have to attack them with flyers. Other people can attack that opponent or we can mass bounce to return all these enchantments back to our hand and cause them to lose the game that way. Illusions of Grandeur, which is three and a blue for an enchantment with a cumulative upkeep cost of two generic. When it enters the battlefield or comes into play, gain 20 life. When Illusions of Grandeur leaves play, lose 20 life. Effects that prevent or redirect damage cannot be used to counter this loss of life. So you already know what we're doing. We're gonna cast Illusions of Grandeur, gain 20 life, move it to our opponent and wait till it gets removed for them to lose 20 life. Thought Lash, which is one of my personal favorites, which is two blue blue for an enchantment with a cumulative upkeep cost of remove the top card of your library from the game. If you do not, remove your library from the game and bury Thought Lash. And for zero, remove the top card of your library to prevent one damage to you. This is a very brutal card and the longer it goes on, the more heavy hitting it is. And lastly, we have Transcendence, which is three white white white. For an enchantment, you don't lose the game for having zero or less life. When you have 20 or more life, you lose the game. Whenever you, lo whenever you lose life, you gain two life for each one life you lost. Now this is an interesting card because we cannot cast this until we are below 20 life because when we play it, we don't want to lose the game immediately because of the enchantment. So let's say we're at 19 life, we can cast the transcendence and move it to our opponents. If they have more than 20 life, they will lose the game immediately. So those are the mean and brutal enchantments and creatures that we're going to be giving to our opponents. However, if we only have a bird that we can give to our opponent to the right, that's totally fine too. We're going to just be rearranging things around and we'll probably get something good to the player to our left. Now let's talk about the third thing, which is control. Now we're already pretty much controlling with the way that we are rearranging the board, but we also have ways of stopping for our opponents from trying to target us or attack us. First up, we've got Kira, Great Glass Spinner, which is one blue blue for a 2-2 legendary creature spirit with flying. And creatures you control have, whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability for the first time in a turn, counter that spell or ability. Blatant Thievery is four blue 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 for a sorcery for each opponent gain control of target permanent that player controls. Expropriate is 7 blue blue for a sorcery with Council's Dilemma. Starting with you, each player votes for time or money. For each time vote, take an extra turn after this one. For each money vote, choose a permanent owned by the voter and gain control of it. Exile Expropriate. First part of our control is making sure that our opponents can't attack us. We have Ghostly Prison, which is 2 and a white for an enchantment. Creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays 2 generic for each creature he or she controls that's attacking you. Propaganda is 2 and a blue for an enchantment. Creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays 2 generic for each creature they control that's attacking you. Dissipation Field is 2 blue blue for an enchantment. Whenever a permanent deals damage to you, return it to its owner's hand. Magus of the Moat is 2 white white for a 0-3 creature human wizards. Creatures without flying can't attack. And then let's go ahead and move on to the non-combat damage related control. Obviously we have Azor, Glenelendra, and Medomai that are very control S style cards. In our creature slot, let's talk about some other enchantments. So let's talk about one of my favorite enchantments, Mind's Dilation for five blue blue. We have an enchantment whenever an opponent casts his or her first spell each turn, that player exiles the top card of his or her library. If it's a non-land card, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. And then obviously, since we're playing control, we're gonna be playing a lot of counter spells. So besides Glenelendra, we have Swan Song, which is one blue for an instant counter target enchantment, instant or sorcery spell. Its controller puts a two two blue bird creature token with flying onto the battlefield. Arcane Denial, one and a blue for counter target spell. Its controller may draw up to two cards at the beginning of the next turn's up keep and you draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. Counter spell, which is blue blue for counter target spell. Disallow one blue blue for an instant counter target spell, activated ability or triggered ability. Desertion, three blue blue for an instant counter target spell. If an artifact or creature spell is countered this way, put that card onto the battlefield under your control instead of into its owner's graveyard. Now I haven't put as many counter spells into this deck simply because we want this deck to be as fun as possible, even for our opponents who are gonna be pretty upset at us for moving things around, but it always feels bad when you stack your deck full of 10 counter spells. However, if that is your play group and your play group is fine with that, then go ahead and load all the counter spells you want into this deck. Next up, let's talk about the ramp. We simply just have artifacts since we're playing blue and white, it's hard to find some good mana ramp. So we have Soul Ring, Wayfarer's Bauble, Arcane Signet, Azoria Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Star Compass, and Gilded Lotus. My recommendation, if you don't want the counter spells, I would take out the counter spells and try to add in some more ramp. And then for our card draw, we have Pull From Tomorrow, which is blue, blue, X for an instant, draw X cards and discard a card. Mystic Remora is one blue for an enchant with a cumulative upkeep cost of one. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, you may draw a card unless that player pays four. We also have Rhystic Study, which is two and a blue for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may draw a card unless that player pays one generic. Biden the Thassa is two blue blue for a legendary artifact enchantment. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. And it can also, for one and a blue tap, creatures your opponents control attack this turn fable. 
Reconnaissance mission is too blue blue for an enchantment. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. We also have a couple of very cheap casting cost spells such as Brainstorm, Factor Fiction, Telling Time, and Portent. And that's about it for the deck deck. If you want to see the full list, please look in the show notes below. We'll have a link to the full deck list. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you are like me and you enjoy the controlling-esque feel of Commander, then this deck is perfect for you. I'm super excited to play this deck on the next episode of Duel of the Peaks, which will be Jumpstart, so please stay tuned for that. If you have any other suggestions for this deck or maybe a different way of building it, then please leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know what you think and what your advice could be for players out there who are looking to build this awesome commander. I will say though, I did look into Jin Tribal and there just is not enough Jin to be able to support this. If you want to build a jank Jin Tribal deck, then good on ya, go for it, I support you. And with that, that is it for our episode. Please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate it and we thank everyone for watching this and we will look forward to seeing you next time on our next Deck Tech. Griffin out.